So dealing with infertility is stressful. Day-to-day -day life can knock you down time and time again all on its own, but when the holiday season comes around, stress rockets up to 11 and doesn't come back down till February. There are Christmas-themed pregnancy announcements, adorable family photos, and 17 Christmas parties where some variation of Aunt Susie asks you why you haven't had kids yet. Holidays are stressful, that's just a fact of life. But with the following tips, I believe you can make it through to February without going insane or slapping a relative. Hey guys, so I don't know about you, but the holidays are a stressful time for me. I mean, I assume they are for you too, or you probably wouldn't be watching this video. Over the years, I found a few things that can help reduce infertility stress around the holidays, so I thought I would share them with you. Number one, don't be afraid to say no. Okay, so I basically suck at this, but I've been getting better. Like I said in this video, sometimes I can handle baby showers and parties totally fine, but sometimes I just can't. If someone invites you to a party and you know that there will be a lot of kids or pregnant women there, it's okay to say no. Your well-being is important too, and there's no reason to subject yourself to a crap ton of emotional pain just so Aunt Gladys can make small talk with you for a bit. If you want to go and think you'll be okay, great, but no one can force you to go if you don't want to. All you have to say is no. Number two, don't forget self-care. I'm pretty bad at this one too. Apparently this is one of those do as I say, not as I do sort of situations. Self-care comes in a lot of different forms. For some people, it's getting a pedicure or heading to a great sale. For some, it's relaxing in a bubble bath with a glass of wine and classical music. And for others, it's playing a video game while rocking out to loud, angry music. Whatever form your self-care takes, make sure to fit it in throughout the holiday season. Like I said before, your well-being is important, and you aren't going to make it through without focusing on your needs, at least sometimes. Number three, try to spend time with other people that don't have kids. Okay, so I'm actually good at this one, but that's because one of my few friends is my sister Angela, who is also infertile. It still counts though. Some infertile people might be fine hanging out with couples that have kids, but many are not. If you're one who gets stressed or upset when around kids, try to make time to be with someone who doesn't have children. Even if that means taking extra time to spend with your significant other, having support from someone who gets it is a really necessary thing. If you don't have someone like that in your life currently, you are sure to find someone on the wonderful World Wide Web. There are tons of support groups, meetup groups, and infertile bloggers and YouTubers, and more on places like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter that would be glad to have you. Having a group of people that understand your situation and won't judge you for skipping that baby shower is worth its weight in gold. Number four, don't feel like you need to share every bit of your infertility journey or history. So when Aunt Gertrude comes up to you and asks you for the 17th time when you're going to have children, don't feel obligated to share everything. I'm a pretty open person when it comes to talking about our infertility, obviously. So I try to use questions like that as a chance to educate people on infertility. Because I'm so open, I don't really get a lot of awkward questions at family gatherings anymore. There might be one or two, but for the most part, the only people that still ask questions are the ones that genuinely care about the answers. But just because that's how I am, it doesn't mean you have to be too. If you're not comfortable sharing your story, don't. It's that simple. Some answers you can use when someone asks the age-old question of, when are you planning to have kids, are, I'm not sure, but anyway, how's Frank? Or any question that gets them on a different topic. You could say, we've been trying for a while, so I guess we'll have to wait and see. If you want to go with a little humor, you could try, as soon as someone tells me how, I know that whole stork thing is a myth. Or, why bother, all the good baby names are taken. Or if you just want to shut the whole thing down, just say that you don't really want to talk about it right now. If they continue trying to pump you for information after that, just walk away. You don't owe anyone information about your reproductive plans. Let me say that again. You don't owe anyone information about your reproductive plans. Don't feel obligated to share if you don't want to. Number five, if it gets too hard, leave. Okay, so I know that moms all over the world are crying out in anguish that I dare suggest such a thing, but I'm sticking with it. If you go to a party feeling like you can handle it, but then something happens that makes you upset or increases your stress, leave. You are important. Much more important than one Christmas party. Are people gonna make comments behind your back about it? Maybe, people can be jerks. 
but avoiding the possibility of obnoxious comments isn't worth putting you in a dark place mentally or emotionally. I know I kind of focused on this, but your well-being matters. If you're going with your significant other or a trusted family member, you can talk about things ahead of time and maybe set up a little sign of some kind that you need to leave. And if you do have to leave, don't beat yourself up over it. Things might be better next year, or they may not, but in the meantime, you need to take care of yourself. And number six, focus on gratitude. I know this might rub some people the wrong way, but hear me out. When dealing with infertility, especially during any kind of treatment, it can be hard to focus on anything else. You might have had a failed cycle, a failed IVF attempt, or maybe even the devastation of a miscarriage. During times of loss, we can frequently let ourselves get drawn into the spiral of negativity and depression. After our failed adoption attempt, I was extremely depressed for a long time. Infertility and the crap that goes with it takes its toll on a relationship and on the individual, and the only one that can keep things from spiraling out of control is you. I know that this is easier said than done, but if you can take a few moments here and there to try to focus on the things you do have, I promise that it will lift your spirits. Is it a cure-all? Of course not. The only cure for grief is time. But taking a few minutes each day or week to focus on what you're grateful for can only help, so why not give it a try? So I hope you guys found these six tips helpful and will implement them this holiday season. If you have a tip that I didn't share here, please leave it in the comments below for us all to check out. If you want to connect with me, here are the links to all my social media goodies. If you need support or just want to chat, feel free to send me a message or leave a comment. I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season and I'll see you guys next time. Even if that means spending good number four. <laughs> oh, I realize I'm trying to change this and probably as well means like looking into the camera. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, yeah, I, I have I have one where you're eyes. doing that, which is really great, where you're just like staring all creepily into it. Failed IVF attempt. <laughs> uh